Okay, so this is a quick introduction video. Um, this is my electric assist bicycle that I have recently put together. It is a 2002 or 2001 specialized rock hopper. I really like it for an e-bike because it still has the V-brakes and especially in the back. Um, the motor is a rear-mounted uh, Magic Pi 4 from goldenmotor.ca and I'm running a 12 amp hour 36 volt battery. Um, on the cockpit here we've got a cycle analyst and I've got two ridiculously bright lights. Um, I don't feel uncomfortable biking at night at all. Um, I've run a number of different light setups in the past and this one plugs right into the cycle analyst. Uh, you can buy it at the Golden Motor website they were kind of pricey, but they are phenomenally bright and very, very nice. I'm using a throttle setup. So I'm, I, I started e-bikes probably five, six years ago, and I've always run a throttle setup. I'm just very used to managing my own power. I like the on-demand model. Um, got one of the uh, LED tail lights there. Uh, one thing I will say about this tail light is it was very expensive, and from pictures on the website, I really expected a bigger unit. I was thinking it would be like, you know, the size of the back of the battery sort of thing. Uh, it is very bright. Um, I've got it set up kind of askew here. Everything's in duct tape until I finalize it, or, you know, it'll probably always just be in duct tape. Anyway, the wiring on this kit was pretty easy, very minimal sort of, I know, I just it's all stuffed up in here and wrapped in duct tape. Connections are all soldered. Um, I really like these plugs. They are the bee's knees. Um, when I first had it set up, I had the tension a little wrong on the cables and uh, they would pull out every once in a while, but it's really nice to be able to have that point of troubleshooting, you know, like uh, just check the plug, make sure it's, you know, nice and solid. They are very, very solid plugs. So, nice watertight connection. Haven't had any problems with that. Um, I live in Nova Scotia and it's very wet here. I'm just gonna turn that off so I don't accidentally engage the uh, throttle. <laughs> but as you can see, I did that one-handed with my left hand. No problems. Um, okay, turn it back on. So it's a V3 cycle analyst. Um, the functions are amazing. It's a bike computer on steroids. Tells you everything you want to know about your battery as well. So um, obviously the temperature sensor is not working there, but it is very robust. I don't use half the functions that this thing has. I uh, really like the uh, Magic Pi 4 here for its regenerative capabilities. Uh, it doesn't sound like much, but over the course of a single battery charge, so over 12 amp hours of usage, I'll actually regen probably an amp and a little bit, like 1.06 or something like that. So really loving the direct drive Magic Pi 4. Uh, the sine wave technology, I think, really helps with the regen effect. Like it's an appreciable amount of regen. Like I said, I live in Halifax slash Dartmouth, so it's uh, very hilly around boats. So I've, I've put 300k on the kit so far. Um, it's enough to form an opinion. And for that, I've only spent 137 total amp hours, which is pretty cool. Um, just trying to find the... Uh, yeah, okay, so the watt hours per kilometer here. I've been running tests all day, so I'm deliberately going up the biggest hills I can find repeatedly. <laughs> And uh, it's much better than my old geared motor. Uh, I used to have a cheap, bought it from Alibaba.com kit when I lived in Australia. And it uh, used a lot more power, was significantly less powerful. And I'm really impressed with this new, much more expensive modern gear. Yeah, so. That's the basic e-bike. 
Um, it's got a kit on the front. Uh, this kit actually accepts the mobile phone. So you can put your mobile in here and uh, the touch uh, screen works through this plastic. So it's actually very handy. I you turn the brightness all the way up. I've got a Moto E2. So it's you know, not the flashiest phone in the world. The screen is kind of crap, but um, it works just fine like this. So I use that with a Bluetooth speaker for music and navigation and all sorts of stuff. So very handy little thing there. And if you have an e-bike, please, please, for the love of Christ, carry tools. So I got a couple of uh, wrenches in here because the rear gear is, uh, yep, nuts and bolts. No, the rear gear, I mean, the rear material, like, you know, what's going on back here is fastened with nuts and bolts. The gears are just a normal cassette on there with a spacer. Uh, but again, bolts on this side too. And this is something you really want to check if you have an e-bike. You want to make sure your bolts are always tight. So I keep the tools to do that right here all the time. So a wee little multi-tool that uh, some cable installer left behind at my house. I had a couple of adjustable wrenches. We got uh, wire strippers, some electrical tape, a uh, patch kit, and a standard, like, it's got everything in it, bike tool. One thing I will say about uh, bikes in North America is the mix of Imperial and Metric is super annoying. Super annoying. Uh, it'd be great if the United States would get on board with the modern times and ditch the Imperial system so we never have to encounter it again. But... As that is not the case, we shall continue to have all sorts of fun times seeing if we have the right size Allen wrench. Okay, so this is the cockpit. Thumb throttle, like we said. We got some really crap grips. Uh, the build's covered in duct tape because I really feel that detracts from its uh, theft appeal. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I will actually sometimes spray rust onto my bikes, like, you know, rust colored paint and just make it look as unappealing to steal and try to sell as possible because this bike, while it's not like, you know, it's a 2001, I think, uh, specialized rock hopper, it is old. The bike only cost me 400 bucks, but with the e-bike kit attached to it, it's darn near a $3,000 build. So, I like it to look as unstealable as possible. I'm also not concerned with, like, you know, the flash appeal of my bike. Yeah, if you live in a nice neighborhood and you're going to an office where you have secure parking, you may just, you know, decide to go with a much neater way of managing your cable system. I just wrapped it all in duct tape. I'm also going to spray paint the battery here and uh, give it a coat of never wet which is a hydrophobic coating you can buy at Canadian Tire or I'm guessing Lowe's or wherever the heck you buy hardware stuff um yeah so that's you know initial introduction to my bike um I haven't given her a name yet but it's uh is very impressive. In 300 kilometers, it's not let me down once. I've not had any fuss with the electronics. That wasn't my own doing. And yeah, you know, that's just, you know, once you do your preliminary build, unwrap it, go back, solder the leads, solder all your connections, just do it properly. And this is a very solid kit. Um, the regen is significant. I, I thought it would be a gimmicky sort of thing, but um, as you can see, I've actually disconnected the rear brake here. Uh, I use the regen as a rear brake. So if I want actual stopping power, I uh, go for the left squeeze, which is, you know, my front brake and the regen. And if I'm just looking to slow down a bit or I'm going down a hill and I'm starting to, you know, I'm creeping up over 40k an hour, you know, I'll just squeeze the regen a bit and it works 
wonderfully. I'm very happy with this build. This would be suitable for any number of purposes. I'm currently on a gravel trail. Now it's got a fairly steep incline. I come, uh, this is part of my path when I'm testing battery load and seeing how much range I can actually get out of my bike in certain configurations. Yeah, so it's uh, totally suitable for mild off-road applications. Um, I would be comfortable taking this on a journey of thousands of kilometers just as it is right now. Um, give it a spare battery, it's got an honest range, and that's in terrain like this. Now you can see off in the distance there is another rolling hill. Um, Dartmouth and Halifax are very hilly and this thing has an honest range of about 34k on a single charge. So I have two batteries, I could probably get pretty close to 70 kilometers out of it. Again, that's all dependent on how much energy you want to put in. Uh, it's perfectly rideable without the motor engaged. There is some, uh, there is some uh, cogging from the, from the hub motor because um, it's a direct drive and you know, it's basically magnets in there, right? So there is some resistance from the, the magnets themselves. Uh, quite a bit. I'd say it's probably got like four or five times the resistance of just a regular old like nothing going on with it hub. So it, has, it does have a significant cogging effect. You don't feel it at speed. You don't feel it when you're pedaling for the most part. You do feel it when you're trying to pedal this thing unpowered up a hill. That being said, I can do it. Um, yeah, I can. It's got a saddlebag for it as well, and I can load that up with groceries and pedal it totally unassisted up a hill. It's a it's a workout, but it's not undoable. So if something does happen with your electronics, or you do, you know, strand yourself out, you know, <laughs> you run your battery right down, you can still keep going. You're not going to go as fast as you would if it was an unencumbered bike or a non-electric uh, converted, but you can still move that thing along. So, yeah, it's been fun introducing you all to my bike, and I'll chat with you later.